In this video, we will delve into the detailed anatomy of facial muscles and the superficial musculoaponeurotic system, exploring their functions, interconnections, and clinical significance. We'll begin with an introductory overview. Following this, we'll define and discuss the superficial musculoaponeurotic system, emphasizing its pivotal role in facial expressions and aesthetic considerations. We'll then explore the different muscle groups, including those in the cranium and neck, the delicate muscles of the eyelids, the defining muscles of the nose, and the expressive muscles around the mouth, emphasizing their roles in facial movement and speech. Before concluding, we'll also cover common facial muscle disorders in our clinical correlation section. Facial muscles, also known as mimetic muscles, play a crucial role in conveying emotions and facilitating nonverbal communication. Unlike most skeletal muscles, which attach from bone to bone, facial muscles primarily connect to the skin. This unique attachment allows for the subtle and complex movements necessary for facial expressions. These muscles vary in size and shape, adapting to the functional needs of different facial regions. Their specific locations and attachments enable a broad range of facial movements, including expressions like smiling, grinning, and frowning. They are innervated by branches of the facial nerve, making them susceptible to conditions such as Bell's palsy, which can cause sudden weakness or paralysis. Additionally, their blood supply, primarily from the facial artery, is a critical consideration in surgical procedures involving the face. For ease of study, facial muscles are typically categorized into several groups based on their location and function, the epicranial group, muscles of the cranium and neck, the orbital group, muscles of the eyelid, the nasal group, muscles of the nose, and the buccolabial group, muscles of the mouth. The superficial musculoaponeurotic system is a thin yet crucial musculoaponeurotic layer situated deep to the subcutaneous tissue and superficial to the muscles of mastication. It plays a vital role in facial expression by connecting the mimetic, facial expression, muscles to the dermis. This connection facilitates the transmission of muscular actions to the skin, enabling a diverse range of facial expressions and dynamic movements. Additionally, the superficial musculoaponeurotic system is anchored to the underlying bony structures through a network of fibrous septa and ligaments. Extending from the neck, it is positioned inferior to the zygomatic arch and superior to the muscular belly of the platysma, reaching up to the galea aponeurotica and the temporoparietal fascia under the scalp. The extensive coverage of this layer, from the platysma in the neck to the galea aponeurotica under the scalp, underscores its importance in the overall structure of the face and neck. The connections to the zygomatic arch and other bony landmarks further illustrate how the superficial musculoaponeurotic system integrates with the skeletal framework, providing a continuous network that supports the facial soft tissues. Let's now delve into the facial muscles, beginning with the muscles of the cranium and neck. The frontalis muscle, a component of the epicranial group, is a thin muscle adhering to the superficial fascia without any bony attachments. It covers the forehead, overlying the frontal bone, and represents the anterior belly of the larger occipitofrontalis muscle. The primary actions of the frontalis include raising the eyebrows and moving the anterior scalp backward. These movements are essential for expressing emotions such as surprise, curiosity, and concern. The formation of forehead wrinkles, commonly known as forehead lines, is directly associated with the contractions of the frontalis muscle. This muscle receives its neural input from the temporal branch of the facial nerve, ensuring precise control of its movements. The blood supply to the frontalis muscle is primarily from the supratrochlear and supraorbital arteries. The platysma muscle, another key component of the epicranial group, is a thin, flat muscle situated in the subcutaneous tissue of the neck. It is a superficial muscle that covers the anterior and lateral aspects of the neck extensively. The platysma seamlessly integrates with the superficial musculoaponeurotic system in the lower face, forming part of the broader facial muscle network. This muscle plays a significant role in facial expressions, particularly those conveying emotions like sadness, surprise, and horror. Its primary function involves depressing the mandible, and it also assists in expressions such as frowning and lowering the corners of the mouth. The platysma is innervated by the cervical branch of the facial nerve and receives its arterial blood supply primarily from the branches of the facial artery. 
Now, let's dive into the muscles of the eyelids, focusing first on the orbicularis oculi muscle, a key element of the orbital group. This large, thin muscle is strategically located in the eyelids, functioning as a sphincter arranged in concentric circles around both the upper and lower eyelids. It is composed of two distinct parts, the palpebral and the orbital. The orbicularis oculi integrates seamlessly with the superficial musculoaponeurotic system in the upper face. Its fibers connect not only to the bones of the eye socket, but also to the tarsal plates and the medial canthal tendon. The primary action of this muscle is to close the eyelids, a crucial function for eye protection and blinking. The orbicularis oculi receives arterial blood supply from three branches of the external carotid artery, the maxillary, superficial temporal, and facial arteries. It is innervated by the zygomatic and temporal branches of the facial nerve. The corrugator supercilii muscles, also components of the orbital group, exist as a pair. They are small, pyramidal-shaped muscles located deep to the frontalis and orbicularis oculi muscles. Originating from the medial end of the superciliary arch of the frontal bone, their fibers extend diagonally, laterally, and slightly superiorly to insert into the skin of the eyebrow. The primary function of the corrugator supercilii muscles is to draw the eyebrows together, resulting in the elevation of the medial segment of the eyebrow and the depression of the lateral portion. This action creates vertical wrinkles on the bridge of the nose, typically associated with expressions of concern or displeasure. Innovation of the corrugator supercilii muscles is provided by the temporal branches of the facial nerve, and they receive their arterial blood supply mainly from the ophthalmic artery. Within the nasal group of facial muscles, the transverse nasalis, also referred to as the compressor naris, stands out as a key component. This muscle is an integral part of the larger nasalis muscle. It originates from the frontal process of the maxilla and courses superomedially, forming a thin aponeurosis at the bridge of the nose. Through this aponeurosis, the muscle attaches to the dorsum of the nose, where it intersects with its counterpart from the opposite side. The primary function of the transverse nasalis is to compress and close the nostrils. Contraction of this muscle can lead to wrinkling of the skin over the bridge of the nose, often associated with facial expressions indicating displeasure, concern, or discomfort. The blood supply to the transverse nasalis muscle primarily comes from branches of the facial artery, and it is innervated by the facial nerve. The levata labii superioris alic nosi muscle, a component of the nasal group of facial muscles, is a thin muscle. It has bony attachments at the frontal process of the maxilla and inserts into the skin of both the ala of the nose and the upper lip. This muscle primarily functions to elevate the ala of the nose and the upper lip, playing a critical role in the facial expression typically associated with snarling. The levator labii superioris alic nosi muscle receives its innervation from the zygomatic branch of the facial nerve. Its arterial blood supply is provided by both the facial artery and the infraorbital branch of the maxillary artery. The procerus muscle, a component of the nasal group of facial muscles, is also known as the pyramidalis nosi. It is a small, pyramidal-shaped muscle of facial expression located in the glabella, the area between the eyebrows. Arising from the fascia of the superior nasal region, near the junction of the nasal bones and the supralateral nasal cartilage, its fibers run superiorly to insert into the skin. A portion of these fibers blends with the frontalis muscle. The primary action of the procerus muscle is to depress the medial end of the eyebrow, playing a key role in facial expressions such as frowning, concentrating, and conveying feelings of anger or displeasure. The contraction of this muscle is responsible for producing a transverse furrow across the glabella. It is innervated by branches of the facial nerve and receives its blood supply from the facial artery. Lastly, we will describe the buccolabial group of facial muscles, starting with the orbicularis oris. This muscle is complex, circular, and multilayered, encircling the mouth's orifice and forming a significant part of the lips. Positioned medially, it maintains continuity with several other facial muscles, including the levator anguli oris, depressor anguli oris, depressor labii inferioris, buccinator, and zygomaticus major. 
originating from the medial aspects of the maxilla and mandible, as well as from the perioral skin and the modiolus, the orbicularis oris inserts into the skin and mucous membrane of the lips. It comprises two parts, a larger peripheral part and a smaller marginal part. The orbicularis oris is crucial for closing the mouth, compressing the lips, and protruding the lips, actions that are essential for speech and mastication. The arterial blood supply to the orbicularis oris is primarily derived from the superior and inferior labial branches of the facial artery. Innovation of the orbicularis oris comes from the buccal and mandibular branches of the facial nerve. The levator labii superioris, a component of the buccolabial group of facial muscles, is a paired, quadrilateral shaped muscle. It originates from the infraorbital rim of the maxilla. As it descends over the infraorbital foramen, it extends downward to attach to the vermilion margin of the upper lip. The primary function of this muscle is to elevate the upper lip, thus exposing the maxillary teeth. Contraction of the levator labii superioris is often associated with facial expressions indicating worry and anxiety. It receives innervation from the buccal branch of the facial nerve and its blood supply is derived from the facial artery. The zygomaticus minor, also a component of the buccolabial group of facial muscles, is a thin, paired muscle extending over the cheeks. As one of the primary elevators of the upper lip, it significantly contributes to the production of facial expressions, particularly those of contempt or disdain. The zygomaticus minor receives its innervation from the buccal branch of the facial nerve and its blood supply from branches of the facial artery. On the other hand, the zygomaticus major, a component of the buccolabial group of facial muscles, is a paired muscle extending between the zygomatic bone and the angle of the mouth. It lies laterally next to the zygomaticus minor muscle. Originating from the lateral surface of the zygomatic bone, the zygomaticus major inserts into the skin at the angle of the mouth, blending with the fibers of the levator anguli oris and orbicularis oris muscles. Its primary action is to pull the labial commissure, angle of the mouth, supralaterally, resulting in the elevation of the mouth's corners. This muscle is instrumental in expressing positive emotions, such as smiling, laughing, and conveying happiness. The zygomaticus major receives its blood supply from the facial artery and its nerve supply from the zygomatic branch of the facial nerve. In the buccolabial group of mouth muscles, the buccinator muscle stands out. It is a paired, quadrilateral-shaped muscle located in the cheek wall, situated deep to the other facial muscles. Originating from the alveolar processes of the maxilla and mandible, the buccinator inserts at the angle of the mouth and the modiolus, where it blends with the fibers of the orbicularis oris muscle. Its primary function is to pull the cheek inward against the teeth, which tenses the cheek and assists in closing the mouth, especially during activities like chewing. Additionally, the buccinator plays a role in expelling air from the inflated vestibule, aiding in activities such as blowing out candles or whistling. It receives its blood supply from branches of the facial artery and is innervated by the buccal branch of the facial nerve. In the buccolabial group of mouth muscles, the risorius muscle is a notable component. This small and slender facial muscle arises from the superficial fascia overlying the parotid gland, masita, and or platysma muscles. It consists of a narrow bundle of muscle fibers that inserts into the skin at the angle of the mouth. Often referred to as the smiling muscle, the risorius pulls the angles of the mouth laterally and slightly superiorly to produce a smile. This muscle plays a significant role in creating expressions of happiness or amusement. The risorius muscle is mainly supplied by the facial artery and is innervated by the buccal branch of the facial nerve. Another muscle of the buccolabial group, the depressor anguli oris, is a paired, small, triangular-shaped muscle extending from the mental tubercle of the mandible to the angle of the mouth. It originates from the mental tubercle and the oblique line on each side of the mandible. This muscle inserts into the skin and muscle around the modiolus at the angle of the mouth. The primary function of the depressor anguli oris is to depress or lower the angle of the mouth, an action that can convey expressions of sadness, unhappiness, or anger. The depressor anguli oris is innervated by the marginal mandibular branch of the facial nerve and receives its arterial blood supply mainly from the inferior labial branch of the facial artery.
Lastly, the mentalis muscle, often referred to as the chin muscle and a component of the buccolabial group, is a paired, small, and cone-shaped facial muscle located near the midline of the chin area. It originates from the incisive fossa of the mandible and inserts into the skin of the chin. The primary functions of the mentalis muscle are to raise the skin of the chin and elevate the lower lip. This muscle receives its blood supply from the inferior labial branch of the facial artery and is innervated by the mandibular branch of the facial nerve. Regarding their functions, facial muscles, when at rest, contribute not only to the symmetrical and harmonious appearance of the face but also subtly convey a person's resting emotional state or mood. This aspect is especially important in social interactions, where first impressions or nonverbal cues are often based on the appearance of one's face at rest. Emotionally, facial muscles are involved in displaying a broad spectrum of feelings. This range extends beyond basic emotions like pain, joy, and sadness to include subtler expressions such as empathy, confusion, and contemplation. The nuanced control provided by these muscles allows for a rich tapestry of expressions fundamental to human interaction and emotional connection. In intentional communication, facial muscles are crucial for reinforcing or contradicting spoken words. For example, a smile can enhance a friendly greeting, while a frown might indicate disagreement or confusion. These muscles' ability to demonstrate emotions like anger, disgust, or surprise adds depth and clarity to interpersonal communication. Beyond expression and communication, several facial muscles perform specific functional roles similar to sphincters. The orbicularis oculi and orbicularis oris muscles, for instance, control the openings of the eyes and mouth, respectively. This control is vital for essential functions such as blinking and squinting. In the mouth, these muscles are key in articulating speech, managing food intake, and even activities like playing wind instruments. The interplay of these muscles with other facial structures, such as the skin and connective tissues, also plays a role in the aging process. Changes in muscle tone and volume can significantly affect appearance over time, which is why facial muscles are often targeted in cosmetic and reconstructive procedures. Before concluding, we will discuss an important clinical correlation, facial paralysis. This significant clinical condition involves either partial or complete loss of voluntary muscle movement on one or both sides of the face. The loss of muscle function can stem from various causes, including Bell's palsy, stroke, trauma, or infections like Lyme disease. Physically, facial paralysis disrupts facial symmetry, which is a key aspect of human aesthetics. The imbalance created between the paralyzed and unaffected sides can be particularly distressing for patients, affecting their self-image and confidence. In severe cases, this asymmetry can lead to difficulties in basic functions such as eating, drinking, and speaking, as the muscles responsible for these actions are compromised. Beyond the physical impairment, the impact of facial paralysis can have profound psychological and social implications. Facial muscles play a crucial role in expressing emotions. When paralyzed, individuals may find it challenging to convey feelings. This limitation can lead to misunderstandings in social interactions and can be particularly distressing in situations where nonverbal communication is essential. The treatment approach depends on the underlying cause of the paralysis. Psychological support is also a vital part of managing facial paralysis, helping patients cope with the emotional and social challenges posed by the condition. In conclusion, facial muscles, also known as mimetic muscles, form a complex network across the head and neck. They are uniquely attached directly to the skin, unlike most other skeletal muscles that attach from bone to bone. This distinct anatomy enables the subtle nuances of facial expressions. Predominantly located around the eyes, nose, and mouth, these muscles play a pivotal role in dynamically displaying emotions, ranging from joy and sorrow to anger and surprise. Their ability to contract and relax not only conveys emotional states but also aids in nonverbal communication. Each facial muscle is innervated by specific branches of the facial nerve, responsible for their motor control. This intricate innovation allows for precise and coordinated movements, essential for expressions and various functional activities like blinking, smiling, frowning, and speaking. Disorders affecting the facial nerve, such as Bell's palsy or facial paralysis, can profoundly impact an individual's ability to express emotions and perform basic functions. The primary blood supply to the facial muscles comes through the facial artery. 
In the field of aesthetics and cosmetic surgery, the manipulation and understanding of these muscles are crucial in anti-aging treatments and facial reconstruction.